the question of whether Palestine has the jurisdiction, this is their jurisdiction in this case. When Palestine became an observer state in 2012 at the General Assembly, it was after that. They were a state. They were considered a state. They are already a state. I had this conversation in email with Alexander before the show. And just this week, or just yesterday, Norway, Ireland, and Spain have declared that they recognize the state of Palestine. And there is a perception that is in the media, mainstream media, that's completely wrong about this. And it's fed by the Israeli and the U.S. government. And that is that it's up to Israel and the United States to determine whether Palestine is a state or not. Because if you listen to the American representative, Robert Wood at the U.N., in the vote that they had uh, some weeks ago at the General Assembly about Palestine becoming a full member, he said there has to be negotiations between Israel and Palestine to determine statehood. And this is completely wrong in my understanding. And I'm going to ask Alexander, who's the lawyer, because it's bilateral states that recognize other states that creates statehood, not a vote at the UN. The UN does not vote for statehood. The UN, Article 4 of the UN Charter says that any peace-loving state can apply for membership of the UN. So you have to be a state first before you can apply. And they are a state, they're an observer state, and they were going to, the vote was to make them a full member state now. But the under the Montevideo Convention, which is still in force and it's customary international law, from what I understand, uh, it's a bilateral recognition. And there are now more than 140 nations recognized Palestine. And Colombia announced today they're going to put an embassy in Palestine, I guess, somewhere in Ramallah. So I want to ask you, Alexander, because I'm getting a lot of trolls who are coming after me saying that, uh, of course, Palestine's not a state because they're reading in the New York Times. They're reading that this has to be negotiated between Israel and Palestine. And it's not that's not the way I see it. How do you see that, Alexander? What creates a state is the decision and will of the people who are uh, who constitute the state itself. This is a nation, and you know there's always arguments about what a nation is. But if there's a nation, and that nation defines itself as a state within its territory and its borders, then we're already taking a huge step in saying that there is a state in terms of international law. If other states start to recognise that state, which has been created by those people on their territory, then again, I think the legal position is absolutely clear beyond a certain point. The fact that a state exists is incontrovertible. The existence of a state, in other words, is a matter of fact. Now, I don't think anybody looking at the situation of the Palestinian people today would dispute that there is a state there. The fact that large parts of that state are in a condition of occupation does not itself mean that we are not talking about a state. And I think that is widely acknowledged around the world that Israel doesn't want to acknowledge that because it, it is in conflict with the very concept of a Palestinian state. It's not something we should support. It is something we should be concerned about because by denying the existence of the state itself, they are also calling into, into question the rights of the Palestinian people and whether those people who are there are in fact even a people at all. So I think, you know, we Western governments that take this line are on a very, very slippery slope indeed. Now that's, I think, my, my view... Um, perhaps not all lawyers would agree with it, but I mean, it's certainly my view, and I know an awful lot of lawyers who would. So it looks as though I tied, definitely is turning in the Assange case, in the world's view of Israel, and maybe now also on uh, recognizing that Palestine is a state and has been a state, because Spain, Norway, and Ireland, Western European countries, apparently riling up other Western European countries, this decision, have now come forward to recognize Israel. None of this would have happened if Israel didn't respond the way they have to October 7th. Uh, so one could say they're digging their own grave. Uh, Chris Hedges, if you have any final words on any of no, the things we've discussed? I don't think there's any coming back from this. That doesn't mean that Israel won't be able to perpetuate its apartheid state for some time, uh, but it's certainly lost uh, the next generation. Uh, I don't think it can uh, peddle the myth 
of the only democracy in the Middle East and uh, flowers blooming from the desert and all the other stuff that has acted as a kind of subterfuge for the settler colonial project. I don't, I don't think, I don't think that's, I, I think in that sense, uh, the, the, the mythology of Israel has been obliterated. It is now seen for what it is for those of us, of course, I spent seven years reporting out of the occupied territories and on a daily basis kept attempting to expose. I think it's, it's now exposed and it's not going back. And that's significant. Well, Alexander, uh, no. if you want the final word. No, I, I think it is an important, I think it's a key event, actually. I mean, it, it shows that also control of international law is starting to shift. And this is an important thing because international law, until very recently, has ultimately been very much uh, controlled by the Western powers, the legal communities of the West. They've been the people who've decided how it would work. International criminal law, international humanitarian law. The United States has made a huge issue about international humanitarian law. That they're, make, they're saying that international humanity, the fact that they interpret international humanitarian law enables them to interpret other parts of international law as well. And now we see, for the first time, an international court actually rebelling against this. It's not happy to do it, doesn't want to do it. Karim Khan doesn't want to be sanctioned by the United States, but they've done it. And I, I think that is a seminal moment. It's a seminal moment for the Palestinians. It's a seminal moment for the Middle East, for Israel itself, and for the world. And just to quickly add, very quickly, about the difference between the ICJ and, of course, the ICC. The ICJ uh, looks at disputes between states. The ICC brings cases against individuals. So for the first time, individual Israeli officials, Netanyahu and Galland, are facing indictments. And that is always a very uncomfortable situation to be in. Well, they handed it on a silver platter to the ICC in their statements of intent, of genocidal intent, which were extraordinary, and they keep happening. And then they back it up with actions. Absolutely. I mean, their rhetoric has been astonishing. And by the way, uh, uh, Karim Khan just very, very briefly squirrels in to his statement the fact that uh, one of the facts that's led to this decision to request these arrest warrants is the what he what he extraordinary says extraordinary language he uses the re, the 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 statements of the uh, group that is supposed to have um, carried out all of these things that he's asking for arrest warrants for so does the does the group just confine itself to Netanyahu or and Galland or are we talking about a larger pool of people and if it's a larger pool of people why not um, seek arrest warrants against them also. And if it is just Netanyahu and Galland, which is absurd, by the way, then why not uh, say so? Why not say, you know, the, you know, the, the, you know, the respondents to this request? Why not, why not use the, why use this very strange word, group? But, you know, it's the kind of thing that uh, Karen Khan is hiding behind. Because to, to say again, what Chris Hedges and Craig and Chip have all said to he didn't want to do this. This is not what he wanted to do. And in some ways that makes what's happened even more significant.